there and welcome to your favorite entertainment show. It's The Squeeze and my name is Seymour. That's right and my name is Nancy. How you all doing? Well, I hope I got that <laughs> guest show right. Let me try. Let me try. <laughs> no, it is not Wendy Williams show. It, of course, is The Squeeze, your number one show for everything entertainment and, of course, a little gossip here and there. On this show, there are no crinkum crankums, no higiagas, no odifera cigars. Where did you get all this hula baloo from? Like, where I, did you get it from? Where you got your hula baloo from? I got it from the same place. <laughs> anyway, as usual, the show is packed with a lot to talk about. Yes. Let's kick off with the headlines already. Mm -hmm. Sounds now, good. Sam Sultan wants his fans to never call him a legend again. My husband left me, taking my son with him without any warning. Doris Simeon says, Why I'm campaigning with my blonde hair? Tony Tetrilla explains. Nice is quitting music for good. And of course, Fuluke Daramola opens up on why she never wears mini skirts. Why I walked out on my marriage, Uche Obodo says. And the winner of Project Fame West Africa season seven is. Just wait. <laughs> we'll tell them all about that pretty soon. Yes. Like we told you, we have a lot to talk about today. So stick around with us right here on the show. Because after this commercial break, we'll get into the main gist. We'll yes. be right back. É cabo. Meet one of Nigeria's famous batik designer, painter, textile designer, art educator, and gallery owner, Chief Nike Davis Okundaye. She is known for her colorful batik and paintings that offers a modernist gloss or traditional themes. Africa, Afropolitan vibes here in Lagos, Nigeria, 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 come here, this is where the party is at. Welcome back. Now, Sam Sultan may have been in the music industry for over 14 years, but he still does not consider himself a music legend. Well, he is very humble, I mm -hmm. must say. Yes. Well, he took to Twitter to tell fans to stop calling him a music legend, but call him Bruce Lee or Baba No Regret. Ah, so now we'll be like, oh, <laughs> so Baba No Regret, how you did now? But I, I, I think he's trying to be humble. Sam Sultan actually is a humble person. Yes, he is. And maybe he just feels uncomfortable with the fact that people call him legend and he's like, ah, ah, I'm just a young man exactly. who works so hard to get to where I am. Why yes. give me that kind of title? Yes, so I think we should just leave the legendary title to two things. The likes of, yeah, and, yes. and uh, the late fella Nikola Kukuchi. Yes. Those ones are, yes. they are the legends. Yes, but uh, you guys have heard him. Stop calling him legend. Uh, he would rather you call he him Bruce, Bruce Lee. Lee. Or Baba, Baba no, no regrets. regrets. <laughs> Moving on, I can authoritatively say that Doris Simeon and her now ex-husband Daniel Ademinokon were one of the cutest couples in the industry. But that didn't last very long, as he reportedly left her for actress Stella Damascus, whom he now lives with in the United States of America. Well, Doris opened up to punch newspaper and here's what she had to say. Initially, it was rosy, but at a point everything looked rosy outside but not at home. He just woke up one day and decided he didn't want the marriage again. I can't say what actually happened. I did not suspect if he was dating any woman or not because we were the best of friends. Mm. I trusted him too. When the problem started, I was begging him for reconciliation. Going further, she said. He would leave the house for some days and would not pick my calls. He also accused me of nagging and policing him around. At a point, he came back and told me it was lack of money that caused the problems. As a good wife, I suggested we pray about it. He told me one day that he wanted to go and see his mother and took our only son with him. The union produced a child. I did not suspect anything because they usually went out together. That was the last time I saw my then two-year-old son. Well, when asked if there was any room for reconciliation, here was what she had to say. I am not ready to reconcile with him. It is going to four years since we split and I do not see anything wrong in that. Maybe because of the things he said when I sought to reconcile. I wanted reconciliation when the whole thing started, but he said it was too late. He never said what the problem was. If he says I cannot force him into a marriage that he is no longer interested in, why would he want to come back now? Ouch. You know the most annoying part about all of this is that uh, Stella Damascus in the, is in the middle 
of this whole own. drama. So no, we cannot help, but people cannot help going back to say, might she have, may she, may, is it possible that she caused this? Is it that, you know, is it possible that Stella Damascus is in the middle of all of this? Because she is in the middle, but everybody wants to know, did she cause the breakup? But really, Nancy, I, first of all, as much as we can say, yes, uh, Stella is in the middle of all of this, mm -hmm. I really, I know that it's hard for you to know what broke your marriage up in the first place. But yes. really, when a man wakes up one day mm -hmm. and decides to leave his home, a home he loved and, you know, wanted to be in, and he just walks away without a word, without an explanation, it means Doris, no I'm not happy. blaming you. And I know that you try so hard to get the truth out of him. What yes. exactly did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. But if he has not been able to provide an answer for you, then you should take this uh, maybe take it to court because as a mother, mm. you should be able to see your child. Exactly. You should be able to take care of your child as yes. well, unless she's not a fit mother. Mm -hmm. Unless. No, but that she is said. Where she it said. Is. Yeah, she said it at some point in the interview that uh, they always see at court that they, they, now it's the matter is in court. But uh, you know how sometimes it could be with the Nigerian law system. It might take quite a while. And I learned her son now is six years old. And she's not seen him in, in what four years, and he's six now. So. Yeah. I don't know what, what kind of father that is that will just wake up and take the child away. If this story is really true, yeah. so just wake up and just take a child away from the mother and then up to today, she's still frightened to see her son. To me, that is wickedness. I also hope that they haven't brainwashed the child and, you know, give him false information about the mother. Oh, your mother is a witch. Oh, your mother is bad. Oh, your mother is... Because if you do that to a young child, it will stick. He will grow up hating his mother without even knowing the truth mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd like to think Daniel uh, Ademino Coin is a good man. And I'd like to think uh, Stella Damascus is a better woman. And so that will not happen because I feel all of those uh, feeling bad negative energy will only happen with a bad father. So I'm, 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 I'm just hoping that he's a good man and he'll tell his son nothing but good things about the mother. But explain to him why he had to walk away. Probably because he was no longer happy and he just wanted a divorce. So, really? so people, when, they, when they're no longer happy in a marriage, you just walk away? Uh, well, these days, some things just happen. You never wow. know. So many things might have happened. But of course, you know, happiness is very key in this. It's, it's, it's just obvious that he wasn't really happy anymore. Really? And he had to move on. So when you are not happy anymore, walk away. Marriage is for better for worse, you guys. When you take that <laughs> vow, please think about no, what just, you're saying. Because most people don't think about what they're no, saying. They yeah. just say it. It's for better for worse. I mean, you whatever issue that, that comes in work. the marriage, you make it work. Exactly. You don't just walk away. Exactly. I, I'm beginning to think we need to put this uh, Sheung Kuti's law into the into constitution. <laughs> Stay in it for 18 years before you walk away. Exactly. Or before you <laughs> want to walk away. It doesn't mean you have to walk away after 18 years. Please stay in your marriage for as long as possible. Forever if possible. Oh, but yeah. we'll move on now. Now, Tony Tetwila attracted a lot of criticism when he made his intentions known about joining politics and also when his campaign poster showed him rocking the signature blonde hairstyle. Yeah, yeah, I know that hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Now, people, of course, branded him a joker, but he came out to defend his look. Here's what he told the Nigerian Tribune. I am not going to the office to sing, though I'm an artist. I'm going to serve my people. I'm not going to the office with the tinted hair. I was discussing with some youth leaders who said I could leave the hair, but now that people are speaking on it, I have to do what my people want. I only use the blonde hair to campaign because everybody knows Tetrila with that trademark. Mm -hmm. There were also a few speculations that he was broke. Well, he denied being broke, saying, how can I be broke? I am not broke. Everybody knows where I'm coming from. I am not going into politics for the fun of it. We artists always sing about poverty, but barely do anything about it. If you know songs like Prayer for Niger and Igo Better, you will see that we only complain, but we don't do anything about the suffering. We want Nigerians to live a better life. What I am going to do is I am going to deliver matters and not the hair. Tell your mother, oh, tell your sister, it go better. Tell the nation, uh, it go better. Yeah, I remember the song. <laughs> I remember he doing it, my girl. It go better. <laughs> Okay, um, congratulations uh, for all the celebrities that are going into uh, politics for what, for whatever reason that I really do not understand. But hey, best of luck. Now, what exactly is Tony Tretilla going to be doing there? First of all, I don't want, I don't like to judge a book by its cover, but uh, everywhere in the world, Tony Tetwila, politics is a serious matter. People just don't wake up in their houses, go out and take a picture and put it on a, on a campaign poster. Please take politics more serious by taking off that hair. I saw a campaign picture of him this morning and he had a hat on. That is better. Tint your hair back to black 
or whatever, but do not make politics in Nigeria look like a joke. Anybody from any developed country will see that and say, these people playing. I know they are playing. No, a politician cannot be on blonde hair. <laughs> oh, they can't be carrying a blonde hair. So please, we know that you want to take politics to the next level or you want to, you know, take uh, Nigeria to the next level. Well, please, you have to understand that it's a serious matter and we need serious people. Mm. Nicely said. Well, we hope that when you get there, you do as you have promised. Not that you get there, eat money, come back, tint your hair and get on stage and sing you don't eat my car because at that point, we will definitely be hitting you with our own cars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Richard. Now, moving on, still on politics. Takes nice made his intention known to everyone that he is going into politics. Well, the news now is that he's actually quitting music for good. You heard that right, guys? Yes, what he told the son. Yes, I want to leave music for politics. Next year, January, I will be 35 years old. Ooh. And I am not praying to still be in music at that time. That's why I like being petite. You guys just, you know, <laughs> fool people with your age. But he went on to say, I am serious about politics now. When I started initially, I talked about being your brother's keeper, and that's why I studied law at Lagos State University before I dropped out to concentrate on my music career. I hate when things go wrong. When two or three people are having issues, I love to get there to settle their differences. Well, when asked about his fans who would sure miss him, he replied, I will say they will love me more by the time they see the plans that I have for them. For real? Anyway, he goes on to say, I have so many plans on my mind. Imagine if the late fella Nicola Kokuti was a politician. He would have, he will not just criticize the mistakes of our leaders, but also correct them. We have graduates riding commercial motorcycle, which by the way is Okada, selling meats. Their certificates are not being used, but they're shouting that the government is not doing well. There can't be any change if the youth don't stand up now to do something to help the country. Well said, nice. Well, we all remember his ex-wife, Tony Payne, right? Well, when he was asked about what relationship he shares with her right now, since, you know, they split, yeah. he said, and I quote, she's nothing more than we have a child for each other. Ouch! Uh, let me understand something nice. If Fela Aniklaku was a politician, even without being a politician, he still spoke for the average Nigerian. He still made an impact in politics. He still made an impact in the country. My issue is, must celebrities go into politics to make an impact? I keep asking this question and nobody wants to answer. Uh, well, what they'll tell you is, of course, it gives them a better platform, oh, but please. I don't think so. If you're not starting something, being a celebrity already, what do you now want to do when you're I in mean, power? When, when you Which were... actually, you know, power actually, it, 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 some people get so drunk with, with power that they forget about they forget about what they said they were going to do so if yeah. you're not already doing something before you get into that high power seat i if, yeah i don't know power is really intoxicating know. and it takes the grace of god for you to get have that power and not allow it control you take for example the peace ambassadorship thing they give to most of these uh, celebrities yeah it's just like a couplet number peace um, ambassador 01 02 03 I have not really seen anybody go out for peace missions, go out to where they're fighting wars, go out to where people are suffering to actually do something about it. It's just like, oh, I'm a peace ambassador. You know, the number. Funny part? you know the funny part, Nancy? They don't actually need to go to places they fight war because the, the, the word peace, if you can start from schools, if you can start from communities, if you start making awareness, because it is we individuals that create this war. If you start by educating our minds, changing our orientation about certain things, mm -hmm. we will start to have peace within ourselves. That way, there won't be war. Mm -hmm. But they just have this awards and they cross their hand and end so much and do absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing. Well, uh, if we keep talking about this, we'll probably take forever. But about nice saying uh, him and his wife, uh, yeah. ex-wife, Tony Payne, um, that is like, woo. If, if I was Tony Payne right now, I'd be like, oh my God, I that am so like heartbroken. It was a big slap. Exactly, because he just said we have no, maybe it's the truth anyway, it has to be the truth. The fact that they have no relationship, but the fact that they are, they have a child together. Together, that's, that's, that's the really only sad. thing that they get to talk about. Oh, it just I, shows all is not well in the, in the, it just shows all is not well between They didn't have a good breakup. It's quite unfortunate. Well, anyway, but. we wish uh, nice the best. 
as he gets out there, we keep saying it, do what you have from. If you get there and you do absolutely, I trust Nigerians, they will stone you so bad, you would think it was magic. Exactly. For real. So get in there, go and do what you have promised the average Nigerian you will do. And then we can say, oh, this is a celebrity with a difference. Mm -hmm. He made a promise and he kept to it. Oh yes, you couldn't have said that any better. Well, we'll go on another break now, but do not go anywhere as we'll be back with more stories. Stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. Did you know that Ankara is not from Africa? Hey! Did you know that? Hey! Hey! Africa, Afropolitan vibes here in Lagos, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Come here, this is where the party is at. Welcome back, guys. Now, if you all remember, actress Foluke Daramrala was in the news because of her controversial marriage to a man whose wife accused her of snatching him. The actress, who once revealed she was raped, opened up to Punch on why she stopped wearing mini skirts and on maintaining her skin. Oh, well, she said, and I quote, You will never see me wear a short skirt or a micro mini skirt, even though my husband really loves my legs. Because of my rape experience, I have phobia for miniskirts. I was wearing a miniskirt when that happened. Well, on maintaining her complexion, she said, there was a time bloggers were yabbing me that I bleached my skin. When I went into my first marriage, I had a lot of challenges. And because of that, I was not able to take care of my skin. One thing about me is that I don't like using harsh substance on my skin. I like to look as natural as possible. I don't like looking too artificial, and that is why you can never find a tattoo on me. <laughs> Whenever I use a cream, I see that it's making my skin too fair. I stop using it and allow my skin to rest. First of all, let's talk about the fact that she said the short skirt thing and... Uh... But it's, it's, it's hard for a lady, a woman to come out and say, I was raped. I really, I really admire her courage. Yes, to it say takes that. a lot. It takes a lot because first of all, you get stigmatized. Yeah. Before any other thing, before you have to go through the whole emotional trauma, people stigmatize it. That's why there are lots of rape is rape incidences that are being swallowed up by the person. They get True. raped and they just think, well, it deserved. I deserved to have been raped. You know, she was wearing a mini skirt. She could have thought, you know what? I'm sure to run that time. She thought it was because of this mini skirt. If I wasn't, if I was wearing a long skirt, I would not have been Maybe raped. But yeah. darling, the people who have worn long skirts. People who have tied wrapper, people who have worn boban wrapper, people who have even covered head to toe and still <laughs> suffered from rape. Rape yeah. is a psychological thing for men. Men who rape women are not men. They are cows, not even cowards. They are main cows. You can slice them and use them for sausages. And I think she still feels guilty that because she was putting on skirts, that's why she was raped. Sweetheart, I need you to let go of that pain, let go of that heartache. It wasn't because you were putting on skirts that you were raped. It was just because the men were too dumb or too responsible to realize what they were doing. But yes. well, uh, thank you also for helping women out there know that when something bad happens, you can find the courage to talk about it. Yes. And like she said, do not use hash substance on your skin. Use something very natural and look natural. Well, that's best of luck to you on that one. <laughs> uh, we'll move on now. Uche Ogbojo was heavily pregnant when her 10-month-old marriage packed up. There were reports that her husband, Dan, was already married to a woman with kids who was begging her to leave him alone. Well, she opened up to Vanguard in a recent interview on why she really walked out. These are her words. My marriage was filled with lies. It's a pity it didn't work out. I didn't go into the marriage to crash it. I wanted a family. I wanted a loving home and a loving husband. That was why I went into it in the first place. But as nature would have it, I didn't get any of those. I still thank God my head is intact. When asked when she discovered he was lying to her, she replied, well, it was good while it lasted. He was a good man to me. I felt all I saw was all I was supposed to see. But later on, when one thing led to another and things started unfolding, I started finding out that everything was not what it seemed. As his girlfriend, some things that were hidden were revealed when I became his wife. What happened between me and my husband is between me and my husband. We cost it, both of us cost it. Well, there were rumors that she left him because he had brain tumor. But she, re but she reputed such rumors, saying he doesn't have brain tumor. He was sick at the time. He had an issue, but his sickness is not the reason why our marriage crashed. Money was not the issue either. We would definitely know about his health 
status before I would marry a man. I knew what I was going into, so how could I just leave a man because he had a brain tumor? It's funny. Mm. But she, the fact that she walked out of a marriage when she was uh, heavily pregnant, and she said her, her marriage was already having problems in the first month. I think uh, our Nigerian celebrities these days, no offense to you guys, I don't know what you go through, but when Kim Kardashian's marriage crashed in 72, 72 hours with a lot of people from Nigeria, they were just, what? Are you serious? But our Nigerian celebrities are actually topping that chart now. Kim Kardashian has nothing on them. But at the but same she, time... She, Kim still has the shortest marriage. 30 to 72 hours? Okay, I think... Oh, yeah. sorry, 72 days. 72, yeah, she's Three still months. Still the has. people already... Um, I'm sorry, I have to bring this again. Comedian Princess said her, her marriage already packed up two weeks into the marriage. They just managed to pull through after a month or a few months. They had to go their separate ways. And after six, nine months, people now knew about it. So um, there are people whose marriages these days, and she said in a month, her marriage was already done. Well, it, she started to find out things. So it's, it's really sad that uh, her marriage had to pack up as quick as that. Yes. I hope she's able to pick up from there and move on with life. But exactly. really, if any of this rumor is true, she really needs to go back and sort things out yes. with the husband. Yes. Because it will be sad if people believe that oh, she left the man because he had a brain tumor. Oh, she's saying now that uh, that picture was a very old picture from somewhere way back. But she has stated that the only reason why she left was because she started finding out things that she didn't know when she was his girlfriend. She started finding out things when she finally knew, when she finally became his wife. That's why I say these girls, please know who you're getting married into. Marriage is not glamorous. Marriage is not, after the wedding day, that's the glamour. After the wedding day, the it's main a real thing, thing happens. So Am please I... know who you're getting married to before you just jump into it because you want to be called a missus. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're very right. That I think could be taken also men, men, it's, it's it's really unfair when you have a past relationship or a past marriage and you meet somebody new and you don't open up to that person. Why hide it? Why allow her get into the marriage and then she starts to find out that, oh, you were married and you had children and all of that. Be honest, be open. If she's going to marry you, she will. If she wouldn't, she will move on. Exactly. It's as simple as that. Well, let's hope that uh, the husband comes up with his own side of the story, side of the story. so we don't just, you know, go one-sided. Okay, there's still more story here on the show. Now, let's quickly get into the project room. I've been eating to wait till the other part, the end I of the know. show. But let's talk about it. I'm sure all of you are wondering who won the MTN Project Fame yes. West Africa 7.0. Well, it is no other than, should I tell them? Joffrey, of course. <laughs> And that was that was a huge, huge um, celebration right here mm -hmm. on the show. But interestingly, the, um, the first runner-up was, was Rookie. The first, first runner-up. So, sorry, first runner-up yes. was Rookie. Second runner-up was Kristen. And the third runner-up was Clement. Now, a lot of people have been talking about this. Yes. A lot of people. And yes. there's been... Um, there's been people who are so angry, some people who are so mad that a maker did not win. Mm -hmm. What do you think about there's been curses here and there? Um, well, most people just felt like they, most people loved a maker's more because it had this huge fan base. But I think that, uh, like somebody said in the studio today when we were talking about it, they didn't really come out to vote. That's you know, if you're in the studio and you're screaming, a maker's, that does not automatically translate into, into votes. votes. You have to vote. That's why we keep saying vote for your favorite contestants. So if you, if you don't vote, other people who have people who want to vote for them, fans that want to vote for them, they will vote and they will they would win regardless yeah. of the fact, regardless of if they are the best voices or the least because on Project Fame, everybody has good voices. We yeah, have very good voices. We, we choose, they choose nothing but the best. 
But if your if your votes are not for the best person, then whoever is next or whoever has the highest vote highest vote would gets to take the win. Vote. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. next year there'll be bigger, better contestants. So please, if you have a favorite contestant, vote. Don't just shout about it. Don't just team up and talk about it. Vote for that person, and, and the person your... gets to win. Exactly. Well, save congratulations to Joffrey. He got the five million naira. He yes. got the car, and he got a recording hundred worth. Millions of, of naira. And please, let's quickly state this. We're not saying Emekos or we're not saying Geoffrey wasn't the best. Yeah. What we're saying is, in as much as most people loved Emekos, people also loved Geoffrey. And Geoffrey has true. an amazing voice. I love his style. I love his dress sense. I love the way he sings. So we're just saying, those of you who are team Emekos and will not allow reality setting, please, next time vote. But Geoffrey also deserved the crown. He's so good. He did. Well, congratulations to him. Wow. Well, uh, this is where we get to draw the curtain on the yes. show. Yes. Uh, we wish we could go on and on, but hey, we have to go. And we're sorry it's such a short show today, but at the same time, we love the fact that you could stay with us and thank you so much for watching. Make it a date with us next week. Same time, same station. We love you, but God loves you more. Remember to join the conversation on our social media platforms. Share your comments, your contributions, and your one minute rants. Catch us on Get TV channel 109. Till then, have yourselves a lovely, lovely weekend. All right, guys. Bye.